So I'm putting on some handles today and I thought I'd make you a video. So here it is, start to finish, adding a handle on a mug. This mug's a nice leather hard, not too hard, say seven and a half on a scale of zero to ten. Zero being water and ten being bone dry. Here's a handle that I pulled and it's set up a bit. It's maybe a little on the stiff side, but it will do. And so I always pull, almost always, pull my handles separately and attach them after they've set up a little bit. Handles that are pulled off the mug are lovely. As well. That looks all right, proportion wise. So I threw, happened to throw 11 mugs that day, and I made, I think, 14 or 15 handles the next day. And then I let them sit for a bit, and I think this is a few days later. As long as you're monitoring your drawing. Uh, so I lined up the handle, I put some slip and score on it, and then I check it. And I just kind of tack it on, figure out where exactly you're going to put it. I like it to be the shoulder of the handle. I like to be at the widest peak of the mug. And for my mugs for this shape, I like the bottom curve of the handle to nestle in that bottom curve of the mug. And then I tack it on, which gives me a little mark of where the slip and score goes on the mug body and put some slip and score on there. So I'm making deep scratchy marks and I'm adding slip just means liquid pasty clay. I like my slip really pasty, not too watery because I think that when it dries, it's going to evaporate. So the more water is in it, the more it will evaporate, potentially leaving more chance of cracking. So I like it nice and thick. And now I've got it where I want it. And I'm actually really using some pressure to attach it. So support from the inside and like really push. I actually like that on my mugs, usually you can see on the inside just a little indent where I push to attach it. I just, I just think it shows the hand of the maker, so I leave it there on purpose. And here, you don't need to put your hand inside because you have that weight of the clay floor down there. Okay, here's my favorite joining tool. I got this. Almost 20 years ago, Neil gave it to me. <laughs> it's like a little mini throwing stick. Anyways, so now I am pushing the clay of the handle across the seam and applying some pressure into the seam. You can see I put just enough slip on for just a tiny little bit to ooze out, but you don't want it to like smear all over the place. And so I'm sealing some good hard clay across that seam. I'm not just pushing the soft liquid slip or slurry across the seam. I'm actually pushing clay in there. Same here. And <laughs> some people might watch this and say, oh my god, that's a lot of work and fiddling and finessing. Some people just stick it on there, right? 
and that's fine for them. Uh, I really work to make that join secure and smooth and have no cracks, especially because I use clear glaze, right? Um, if there's the teeniest little crack, I don't want to see like a black cracky look in that seam right there. I want it to be all clay colored. So I take the time to make it really smooth. And then I also do this. I take a little, this is fresh clay from the bag, a little bit like this. And I roll it into like a little, I don't know, a little dumpling. <laughs> and see, I've made it wedge shaped. And then I stick it in there. And again, I push and push and push and support from behind. And I actually saw uh, at Sheridan one time, I went to a maker demo from Ayumi Hori. And she did something like this where she put a little plug of clay in the handle join there. And I just love the way it looks. It softens it so much and it just makes it all smooth and round. And so I took what I saw her do and sort of modified it for my own mugs that I make. And the same again in the bottom one. I just, I don't know. I like the soft curve better than the than this deep triangle crevice. <laughs> and I know it takes more time, but I just like it. I think it looks pretty. I think it looks softer, more pleasant on the eye. And so jam it in there. Now this clay is like a little bit softer than the leather hard clay of the handle and the mug, but um, I'm going to let, so after I do all my joins today, these are going to sit wrapped nice and tight at least overnight until I decorate them because when I decorate them with slip, um, that's going to take a little while and they start to dry out. So what I'm getting at is that after I make all my joins and my handles, I don't let them dry immediately. I actually let them dry super slow. Uh, like I just really baby them and the, depending on the type of clay I'm using, the more I do that, right? The finer particle white porcelain, I got a lot, you can get, I got a lot more cracks in the handles. Um, this is Tucker's MCS. Funnily enough, this was like one of the first clays that I used when I used to work for Sharon Fisk at Clayworks in Bedford, Halifax, Nova Scotia. And I like this clay because it's pretty well-rounded. I don't get a lot of loss with it and it's pretty white. So I get a good color response because I use decorating slips and I want them to be really light and bright. Oh, I didn't see what I did there with the brush. This brush is a hard bristled brush with all the bristles cut off to like a little stub. And it, if there's any lumps or bumps in the clay, it sort of flattens it out. It's almost like sanding it. Cause I don't actually want to rub a lot with my sponge. Um, <laughs> Heavily sponged clay has a certain look to it. It starts to expose all the fine particles and it just it looks over manipulated. If you care about that kind of thing. <laughs> I just want it to be really smooth. Okay. So get in there and then I sponge everything. But just I don't use the sponge to change the shape of the clay. I just use the sponge like you would, I don't know, like a 150 grit sandpaper. Like it's just a final once over to smooth everything out. 
And again, I want smooth, 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 smooth because I'm going to decorate this. Sorry, I hope you can see that. Um, because I'm going to decorate this with slip and then glaze it with clear. So I want everything like just a smooth canvas to start with that slip decorating. Good. I think that's it. Thanks for watching. Bye.